Hey guys, how's it going? Crepain here. Today I want to give you guys my play-by-play -play and show you the in and outs of why I make the decisions I do and generally how I use the Hearth Arena Overwolf app. And basically what this is is like the drafting tool. You guys have seen it in probably, you know, a third of my videos out there where it's like a drafting aid for Hearthstone Arena. And I have used this for a long time. I am partnered with Hearth Arena and I want to show you guys why I pick what I pick and why in the end sometimes I actually disagree with the program. Now, a little bit of history, uh, probably for the last two and a half years or so, largely from when Hearth Arena actually started up and started giving out its tier list. I used its tier list while I was drafting and it's not until right before I got partnered with them that I started using the Overwolf uh, application to give you like the live updates. And the live updates make it cool because you guys can see why my uh, decisions are being influenced and somehow how the synergy interacts. And the reason I do this is largely, well, I'm obviously a pretty good arena player, guys. Like, you know, confirmed by Blizzard now. Uh, I, I play arena pretty well. I know how to draft pretty well. Yet, you know, I, I agree with like 95% of what Hearth Arena suggests. And the 5% I disagree is often in a marginal case, preferential case. And I think it's important to also explain why that is. But the reason I use Hearth Arena is because Often I miss synergies. So, you know, when you're drafting, you're like 20 cards in. A lot of time when you're rushing through, because we've drafted in thousands of decks now, uh, you kind of overlook some things. And sometimes when you're drafting, you have the overlay, it tells you, well, this card is actually really good. You look at it, it's like, oh, really? And then you realize that you didn't consider the fact that you had some synergies in the deck. So it basically is like a guideline. It makes sure I don't, you know, screw up my deck gives me an extra opinion and sometimes I am swayed by that opinion to try something differently than I would normally do. So it's very good on that end and um, in general in like the macro scale of things while you know there's a few things that the app doesn't do a hundred percent perfectly of course it's going to be a project that's always in constant development Hearth Arena's goal is to basically get the absolute best deck possible out of everyone that uses the app. And I guess the Hearthstone developer goal is to make sure that's an impossible task. So there's a bit of conflict there. And unfortunately for Blizzard, I guess, I do believe Hearth Arena is, is winning that battle. I do believe um, drafting an arena is pretty damn easy, especially with these guidelines. So uh, before I get into it, I do want to do an example draft for you guys today. Um, a few of the things that I have noticed that Hearth Arena um, doesn't do 100% perfectly. On one hand, it it tailors to players that are good, but not like super amazing, right? So the reason that's important is if you are a player that averages over seven wins, and trust me, there's almost none of you out there, but hopefully, you know, with enough practice, you can get there. Um, you will have to beat a lot of mages on average. So what that means is Hearth Arena might give you a suggestive pick that might objectively be the best card if you're going for like six wins, but if you're going for like eight wins, it's not so good because maybe it has one health and mages are going to destroy that card very easily. So there's a few of these considerations. Uh, I've been told that the average player who uses Hearth Arena has a 60% win rate and I have like, you know, a mid 70% win rate. So, you know, players who use Hearth Arena are definitely way above average, but, you know, they're not the type of players, on average at least, that, you know, are playing 40% mages like me. So. A few of the small decisions are made differently because of that. And on the other hand, while the software does approximate synergy very well, it doesn't approximate forced synergy. So um, this is a very interesting one, and it's not really one that program like Hearth Arena could ever do perfectly because a lot of it is personal preference. So for instance, I bring up like a, a Blackwing Corruptor. I think Blackwing Corruptor is a pretty good card. Obviously, as a standalone card, it's not great right? But um, if I want to play and if I had a lot of success with dragons in the past, I can choose to pick suboptimal cards to intentionally create synergy. So uh, Black and Corruptor, again, not a very good card, but if it's up against a card that's only like 10 points or maybe 5 points higher on my second pick, I might pick Black and Corruptor because I might just say, well, I'm just going to pick every dragon moving forward. And the application doesn't really consider that you might want to do that because on average, it's probably not even the best thing to do, but it does work out for some people's play style. And another card that 
kind of has a similar effect is Mad Scientist. So Mad Scientist as a standalone card is, is pretty good. It's not like game breaking, but if you somehow manage to pair up a secret with a Mad Scientist, it is actually pretty game breaking. So if you get the option to pick Mad Scientist and you're like Mage and it's the second card in your draft, you bet your ass you can, you can pick a secret, right? Uh, well, not always, I've actually failed that a lot, but you know, you get the idea. You can force that synergy and you can make the card better than what it appears in the start of the draft. So there's a few of these considerations, but overall, you're gonna see a lot of agreement and, uh, well, let's get into it. Let me show you guys what this is like. So I have here the app in the game. It, it looks like this, you can minimize it. I usually have it there and I just hide it behind my webcam. So that's why you never really see it, but it's running. So you pick arena, you're in control of uh, the money you put in and the class you pick. Um, while generally the Hearth Arena app works best um, guiding you in classes that you're not that familiar with, I wanted to pick Mage, which is probably a class that you are familiar with, uh, just so we could see a few, perhaps, if we're given the opportunity to have a few of these differences in opinion. So uh, let's pick Mage and let's see what we get. Clear Blizzard here, so we go with Easy Blizzard. Easy Fire Lance Portal, just a ridiculous card. Uh, here's an interesting decision. We can pick Bone Guard Lieutenant or Mirror Entity. Now, I would actually probably go with Mirror Entity if the Karazhan Occurrence bonus was still in the game because I could get one of those, uh, I think it's called Medivh's Valets pretty easily because they would show up like two and a half times more often. But now, on average, they drop that Occurrence bonus. So yeah, I actually think the Bone Guard Lieutenant is a little bit better. We got some garbage here. Salty Dog is the least of the garbage. Here, Scarlet Crusader is easily the best pick. It's just an excellent card. North Sea Kraken, excellent card. So you can see a lot of this is pretty obvious to an experienced player, but for a novice player, if you're just getting into Arena, this is extremely helpful. So here we have Vile Illusionist versus Jungle Panther. So it, it rates the base tier score higher for the Vile Illusionist, but it says the Jungle Panther is a little bit better for this style of deck. And the reason it does that is because we have so much removal and so many board clears. If you're behind on a board, state but not quite behind enough to use a card like Blizzard you can play a card like Jungle Panther you'll see that it won't die because it has stealth then you'll get a better Blizzard and Violet does not do that so you can see a great example of how Hearth Arena approximates synergy and your existing deck already so very good stuff there um, here I'll probably go with Pit Fighter just overall high card quality um, I've realized that Hearth Arena likes Moat Lurker a lot um, maybe I just don't know how to use the card, but I do not like this card at all. So again, some personal preference might come in here. Now, obviously, we're both in agreement. Sunfury Protector is the best card here. What I'm saying is, if there was a card that would be like a 60-point card here, I'd probably pick that over Moat Lurker, just because I've had a lot of bad experiences with the card. Uh, Evil Heckler versus Stormwind Champion. It likes Evil Heckler because we do have a lot of spells right now, uh, and Stormwind Champion is not great if you if you have mostly spells, and most of our minions are actually pretty large, so pretty good evil heckler there. I think we, here we just go for two drops. It likes the three though. Most value out of these options. So I have two two drops and two three drops. Um, here I think is a strong consideration. You could easily go for a puddle stomper, but often it's cases like these that, you know, I see it four points higher, it's about the same in my mind. Sometimes I'll go with my opinion, sometimes I'll go with Hearth Arenas. Let's just go with Hearth Arenas this time around. Here we have a two drop that's very powerful versus a five drop that's very powerful. Seems to like a five drop. Amani has negative synergy for our deck. I don't think it has two negative synergy for the deck, but sure, they're both very good cards. It really doesn't matter too much what you pick. I think we're a bit low on two drops, but Taunts do help a lot, especially when you have very good spell removal because you use the spell removal for the big guys and the taunts take care of the small guys. So why not? Let's go with Fen Creeper. Always Theo Conjure. Here we have uh, another Fen Creeper versus a two drop. Uh, we have the taunts. Uh, we do have more spells now, but it's getting, you know, we're halfway through the draft and we don't have enough two drops. So here, even though it recommends the Fen Creeper, the scores are tied. I'm actually a bit concerned we're not going to get too many two drops, so I'm going to pick the two drop myself there. Children Yeti, obvious. Uh, wow, some really crappy cards here. Sometimes the crappy cards um, are a bit challenging here. So obviously Alarmabot is, is the worst. Um, Jeeves would work 
in decks that are, have a lot of proactive cards because you just dump your hand, play it, and draw a whole bunch of cards. Where I don't think that's actually going to happen in this deck. I think a lot of the cards are pretty slow and stuff. I think here it's pretty reasonable to pick the Mana Addict. Uh, it is a very poor 2-drop because while we have a lot of spells, the spells that we have cost a lot of mana. <laughs> so we're not going to play a Mana Addict and then get a buff on it. So it's also really bad. Um, fine, whatever. Let's just go with Jeeves. Here we get Cone of Cold and Hungry Dragon. We uh, still only have the Blizzard for a board clear, so it's not great, but again, the other options aren't great either. Um, again, I'm actually going to pick over this card. I've had ex bad experiences with all three of these cards, but I think with the Goblin Sapper, it's going to be more consistent. <laughs> so this is like a, a trauma pick. <laughs> Um, here we have a Taunt versus a Direwolf. Direwolf is better if you have a lot of minions, which eh, we don't really, but uh, yeah, I'll just go with the extra Taunt there. Ship's Cannon, I think, is easily the strong one there. Um, I'm surprised it didn't pick a Noyatron. Uh, Noyatron is pretty highly rated. Uh, sure. If we did pick the Direwolf, we'd probably pick the Noyatron there. Twilight Drake, very easy. Uh, War Elemental versus Flame Lance. We have a really powerful card versus just removal. We've actually fallen behind on spells. We picked a lot of minions in the last few picks, so I wouldn't mind taking just hard removal there. Bomber is an exceptionally powerful card in Arena, sadly. Have to pick it and have a lot of bad experiences from its RNG. Um, here it tells us to pick Master Jouster. I don't have much confidence in the jousting mechanic, and I really hate that card when it loses the joust. Uh, I think I'm actually going to pick a Wild Pyromancer. I think it might be a hard card to use, but with two Cone of Colds and just enough spells, it's like not too many spells, it's going to be at the point where I could play a Wild Pyro on two and not feel bad about it, but it's going to come to the point where Wild Pyro is going to have a good effect in the late game if I choose to save it for that. I actually think I can, uh, I can skillfully use and uh, take a leverage on my good playing ability in Hearthstone to overrule Hearthrena on that pick. like the card draw there. Um, we have a few mechs, but uh, Jeeves is one of them, sadly. Oh, we just have Shredder. All right, Belcher it is. So there it is. That's your draft. It's a pretty decent deck. It was uh, starting off much better than it ended, but overall the curve is pretty good. There's a decent balance between effective spells, just a bit weak on the board clears, and overall I think this is a solid mage deck, so we'll do pretty well in Arena. And hopefully that gives you guys a bit of an understanding of how to use the app. Um, you know, if you are just brand new getting into Arena, likely the opinion that you have on specific cards might not be the reality. So even though you saw me kind of making a few disagreements, I think in the end I picked like one or two cards that Hearthrune did not recommend. If you don't really know what you're doing, you probably shouldn't do that at all. But once you've done a lot of arenas, once you get some experience, you can kind of remember the cards that you would have chosen and you can see how that plays out because even though, you know, you might not be as experienced as some of the other people playing even using Hearth Arena, you, you might just have a different enough play style that you can adapt to it still. But uh, get that experience in. I hope this has been a useful video, and I hope the app has overall been useful. Let me know what you guys think, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.